Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video we're going to look at some more operations that we can perform on strings. Alright, so some of this is going to be review actually. Uh, some of it's going to be new. We saw a little bit of this when we talked about lists and when we compared lists with strings. So let, let's say I have a string spam equals and then I'm going to say hello world but I'm actually going to give it a tab just to make a point um, instead of a space there. Hello and then world. Okay, so there's my there's my string, and if you see in the variable explorer, I've got spam, it's of type string, and it's got hello, and then a big space, which is a tab, world. And I can index this string, you know, so I can say like spam, the zeroth index there is uh, the capital H, right? And uh, because that's the first element, and then E is at index one, Okay, and then we might look at like index 4, for example, is the O. Index 5 would be the comma. Okay, and then look at index 6. Index 6, it returns the, again, the backslash T, which is the escape character for the tab. And if I, if I print spam, right, you, you don't necessarily see the backslash T, but the tab is there. And this call, spam of index 6, will return that... Uh, that backslash t. And we can also do other things like, um, you know, use negative indices, right? Like spam of negative one gives you the, the last one, the last character, which is the exclamation point. Spam of negative two gives you the second to last, which is the d in world. Uh, you can also slice uh, a, a string. So you can say like spam of like three colon seven right and so this is what it returns l o comma then the tab character right or spam uh, nine right so this is what we get here so it can look a little goofy but you're what you're doing is you're taking out the substring from the original string so that's that's kind of useful and you can test using the keyword in and not in if a certain uh, substring is contained within your string I think we've seen this before a little bit so for example I could say uh, hello in spam and that returns true because hello is in spam but notice it's capital uh, it's case sensitive so if I type hello with a lowercase h that's going to return false I can say well does this thing can contain a tab right so the escape character for tab in spam and it returns true there is a tab in spam so this is going to be useful to identify spacing um, and maybe remove spacing because sometimes spacing can uh, give programs some bugs or some errors so we can test to see if there's different kinds of spacing like we could test to see if there's a new line character um, in in my string new line character is the the, uh, the backslash n and of course there's no new line character in my string so that returns false I could ask it is the new line not in spam and that will return true because the new line character is not in spam all right I'm gonna clear this and I'm going to use um, I'm gonna define some variables actually let's say name name will be a string this will be Marty and then um, I'm going to define age. Age is going to be an int 20. And what I want to point out here is a crafty way of um, writing out a sentence or you know a long string that is putting strings inside strings. So say I wanted to say something like, um, hello, my name is Marty and I am 20 years old. I'm going to give myself some space here. Previously, we would have to say something like this. Um, let's say uh, uh, we're gonna print and we would have to say hello my name is and then we'd have to concatenate that with name and then concatenate that with comma and I am and concatenate that with age but age is not a string so we'd have to make it a string and I am blank uh, years old period okay so let's print that and you'll see yeah hello my name is Marty and I am 20 years old so even like even typing that out was kind of tedious and also it's easy to make an error there because of all the plus signs and the, the uh, 
the single quotes it's in converting age to a string so I'm going to show you kind of a slicker way of doing this using um, what's called string interpolation so I'm, I'm going to actually make a note of that over here because this is a term that you want to be aware of string interpolation string interpolation so for example um, I'm going to use the uh, the the, this is usually called one character. Percent %s is one character. And uh, what I'm going to do is say print. This is, this is kind of neat here. I'm going to say my, or hello, I guess. Hello, my name is, and then I'm going to put a percent %s. And the s here stands for string, by the way, comma. So now that that's going to hold the place of name. And... I am, and then another percent s, that's holding the place of age, years old, period. And then uh, outside of that, I'm going to put another percent, and then I'm going to put the variables that I want to fill uh, those percent s's with. So, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's got to be one to one, and it's got to be in the same order. So I want Marty, which is being stored as name, to fill the first percent s. So I'm gonna put name, and then I want age to fill the second percent s. So I'm gonna put age there. Close the parentheses and hit enter, and you'll see, hello, my name is Marty, and I am 20 years old. That's really nice. And I don't even have to put it inside the pr the print function. Like I can just I can define a new string, let's say uh, let's say spam equals, and here's my new string. And so I'll hit enter, and that goes through. And if we can look at spam, and there it is. My spam is now hello, my name is Marty, and I am 20 years old. So that's that's really neat and useful and convenient, right? So n notice the uh, again the syntax here. We've got a string, hello, my name is, and then percent s holding a variable name. And I am again another percent s years old, and then close the string, then put a percent sign again, and then as a tuple list your um, list your variables there in the same order that they appear in the string, and then there's a one to one substitution there. Notice we don't have to we don't have to uh, convert age to a string because we already have the percent s, and the percent s is telling Python that it should be interpreted as a string anyway. So that can be very useful, string interpolation. And um, we can also uh, use what's called um, F strings. So this is new to Python 3. You're going to use F strings. So I'll show you how that works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, another string, and we're going to say, my, hello, hello, my name is, and then I'm going to put inside bra uh, curly brackets, uh, the variable name like this and then I'll say something like next year I will be just to show you that we can do some math with this too age plus one and um, before I hit enter I'm gonna put an F in front of this like that and that makes it in what's called an F string and if I, if I hit enter uh, that command goes through fine and you see the string now is hello my name is Marty next year I will be 21 so I could define a variable like I could call spam equals this F string and when I hit enter then spam is now that string hello my name is Marty next year I'll be 21 so notice the syntax here again we've got F for F string and then the string begins with the single quote and then we put the variables inside curly brackets. This is different than a dictionary. And since age is uh, um, a numerical, it's an int, we can add one to it, right? And so we put that whole operation in curly brackets. And, uh, and Python knows that this should be, or that this is an F string. So it, it will automatically convert it to a string variable type. So that can be very useful and very convenient. All right, in the next videos, in the next uh, couple videos, we're going to look at useful and common uh, methods that we can perform or methods that we can call on strings. Thank you.